I don't want somebody telling me how to do this thing because <laughs> they're, they're like some corporate overlords are just going to like muddle it up because every time I've worked with corporations on things, it's been a nightmare and yeah. they've like, like come close to ruining things, you know, and I've, and I, you know, have reined it in somehow at the last minute and made my made, made things that I'm still proud of, but there's a lot of stuff where it's like, wait, what? Like, for example, I was making the greater creator series and machinima came to me and they're gone now. So who cares? And it was for the Verizon go 90 thing. And I uh, remember that mess. Yep. And they were like, Oh, we want you to make a show. And we're like, okay, let's do a, a biopic show. We're going to do greater creators. We're going to talk about these people that changed, you know, the game in their chosen art field, whether it's Frank Rosetta or um, whether it's um, Gene Roddenberry or whether it's Yodorowsky we're going to do, you know, Stanley Kubrick. We're going to talk about all these guys, Alan Moore. And they're like, great. That's awesome. You know, fantastic. So we start making the show. And then through the, while we're making the show, all the people who hired us like left. And then all these new people came in who had no idea who we were and right. what we did <laughs> and why we were hired. And then all of a sudden they're getting stuff from Verizon saying, well, we have younger and a younger audience on our thing and we need to make this for 12 year olds and you're like wait what i'm making content right. for 12 year olds now <laughs> like what do you that's not what i do like that's not why you hired me and then i had to like censor like all of this art um i had to censor the vitruvian man i had to put i had to oh, censor wow. the vitruvian man's dick you know what i'm saying i'm like this is an art show like talking about art we're talking about frank frazetta i had to censor all these frazetta asses it was like such a nightmare <laughs> and i was just like oh my god like never again like, this is so frustrating and but again, I'm still proud of the show that we made, but it was very challenging. It was very challenging working with these other companies. Uh, no, and we, and we get that happens all the time. You know, yeah. it, it, it oh, yeah. was I, I, I was one of the producers of the movie agent Cody Banks, and we had written it. Uh, Zach Stentz and Ashley Miller had written a script that was Ferris Bueller meets James Bond. And the mm -hmm. target audience was 16 to 25 year olds. And yes. it was it was going to be cool. And then we sell it to the studio. We think, yeah, great. We're in business. We're making a movie. And once once we sold it to them, they said, nope, we're going to make it for eight to twelve year olds now. And we're like, okay, here here was a franchise that would have been a three hundred million dollar grossing movie. And yeah. then they decided to turn it into a. And what what's really interesting is the script that they bought. They fast tracked it and it went into production within three months, which never happens. Totally insane. Wow. And they hired Frankie Munez and Hilary Duff, and yeah. they did the best job that they could. But but the movie became for kids, and it w it was supposed to be it was much more along the lines of the tone of it was much more Back to the Future meets mm -hmm. James Bond, the tone, and yeah. all of that was removed, and it became kind of a silly kids spy kids kind of a thing. Yeah, and it it, yeah. it did fine. I mean, it made not very much money, but it was really interesting to watch a studio and these people are making decisions not because somebody had a, a gut decision to make they're right. following analytics or they're following well yeah. you know we need kid these tween kids between 8 to 12 let's we got to attack, uh, attack and it's like but those kids would still love the movie that you're going to make for 16 to 24 year olds yeah if, if you're if going I like it better <laughs> yeah the, absolutely and if you go after that audience what you're doing is you're eliminating the older audience that's going to grow up, and I mean, if you were 25 years old and you saw this movie and you liked it, well, then you, you're you 25. You'll still like the sequel when it comes out when you're 26, 27, 28. But yes, if you make a yeah, movie that the cutoff yeah. point was 12 years old, by the time someone's 20 or in college, they're going to oh, be... Oh, they don't, no, they don't care. And it was crazy to watch that, and there's nothing we could do. You know, we, we developed this script. Right. We already sold it to the studios. Right. So there was, it was, and it was, it was, it was so maddening to watch it happen. It's so upsetting. So upsetting. And, it's and, so upsetting. and the, the funny thing is, it's like, who came up with that idea? Like, like, why do you have to, why do you have to do this? You don't have to do it. Right. You don't have to. Well, it's, it's, you know what I think it is though? You know what I think it is? I think it comes from a place of jealousy. All right. It's like these people who are uncreative, they're insanely jealous of creative people and they want to pretend like they're creative too. 
and so they put their dick in the mix and they fuck it up and it's just like uh like there's just so much jealousy and hatred towards creatives and artists in general that's like comes from a really weird place not everybody there are the helpers out there who just like wow i can't draw but i really love that you can draw and i'm wowed by it and i'm and i'm honored that i get to look at your stuff and thank you so much and those guys are great and then there's the other people who can't draw that are like, I hate you. I hate you because I can't draw. And it's like, you could you put in the 10,000 hours, but they don't want to put in the 10,000 hours. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't want to do it. Because the thing is, is, like, I've seen people who don't draw very well. And then over the years, they keep going, they keep going, they keep going. And then it's like, wow, like, you're really, you're doing great. Like, they're doing well. They're making, like, a living as an artist. So it's just, you know, it's weird. It's it weird. is weird.